During a CNN town hall on Sunday, Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley said Social Security and Medicare could only be saved by raising the retirement age for young workers. Haley said that because she's an idiot. Nikki Haley also suggests that the high rate of suicide among teenage girls is due to sharing restrooms with transgender women. As I said, Nikki Haley is a moron, and I'll have more on her town hall in a few minutes. The New York Times is reporting tonight that Twitter's advertising revenue is down nearly 60% from last year. This despite claims by its new owner, Elon Musk, that advertising is on the rise. What is on the rise since he purchased Twitter is hate speech. The Center for Countering Digital Hate, as well as the Anti-Defamation League and other groups that study Twitter threads, they all say that since Elon Musk took over Twitter, anti-Semitic speech is up 61 percent, with slurs against African-Americans and the LGBTQ community also up significantly. Elon Musk does not talk to his transgender daughter. More and more corporations are reportedly reluctant to support a platform that can't guarantee that their ads won't be seen next to hate speech. With new reports today saying that Twitter is filled with more links to child pornography than ever before. Musk purchased Twitter for $44 billion in October, and to cut costs, he has fired thousands of employees many whose job it is, was to expunge the social media outlet of garbage and garbage people. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is running for the 2024 Democratic nomination. He's polling at around 20 percent, thanks to name recognition. On Monday night, Kennedy took part in a Twitter Spaces town hall hosted by Elon Musk. During the conversation, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. blamed mass shootings on the pharmaceutical industry, encouraging doctors to overprescribe drugs like Prozac. The 69-year-old son of Robert F. Kennedy, called Joe Biden a warmonger, said the Democratic Party is controlled by the drug companies. He said Americans should try to see the war in Ukraine through the eyes of the Russian people and said we need to seal the border with Mexico permanently. Despite all that, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is running as a Democrat. Congressman Lauren Boebert wants to know who her father is. I suspect her father, her real father, doesn't want to take credit for this monstrosity. It was confirmed over the weekend that her father is not WWE wrestler Stan Lane. This after a second paternity test came back negative. The news was announced by Congressman Boebert, who apparently still doesn't know who her father is. The former professional wrestler Stan Lane issued a statement saying he had a brief affair with Boebert's mother in the 1980s. When Boebert's mother became pregnant with Lauren Boebert, the mom took Stan Lane to court, but a paternity test came back and it proved that he was not the father. But over the years, allegations surfaced that the paternity tests might have been tampered with. So professional wrestler Stan Lane agreed to take another paternity test this year, where once again, he was informed he's not responsible for Lauren Boebert. Lauren Boebert still doesn't know who her father is. Donald Trump's vice president, Mike Pence, on Monday filed papers with the Federal Election Commission to run for president in 2024. Pence will make it official on Wednesday during a speech in Des Moines, Iowa, followed by a town hall that night on CNN. I'll have more on Mike Pence later on in this episode. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie will officially declare he, too, is running for president on Tuesday During a town hall with Sean Hannity last week, Donald Trump said Chris Christie left the governor's office with a 6% approval rating and currently is polling nationwide at zero. Professor Cornell West, who has taught at Yale, Harvard, and Princeton, but surprisingly not at Cornell, 
Cornell West says he will he will be running for president in 2024 as a candidate for the People's Party. The People's Party was established back in 2016 by a former Bernie Sanders staffer. During his declaration speech, Professor West called Donald Trump a fascist and Joe Biden a milquetoast neoliberal. Senator Ted Cruz appeared on Sean Hannity's Fox program Monday night and had this to say about Donald Trump's immediate future. And mark my words, I believe Merrick Garland will indict Donald Trump. He wants to indict Donald Trump because he hates Donald Trump. He hates him. He's angry. Yes, Garland hates Donald Trump. He's angry with Trump because Trump called Garland's wife Heidi ugly. But Garland had to forgive. Oh, that's Ted. It's Ted. Well, meanwhile, Donald Trump has signaled on social media that he is expecting the Biden Justice Department to indict him any day now over his mishandling of classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. Now, Trump is pretty forthcoming. He's good about predicting impending indictments. If you'll remember, he said the Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, was about to arrest him. And sure enough, a few days later, that indictment came down. One of the sure signs that a federal indictment is imminent was the appearance Monday of three Trump lawyers at the Justice Department who reportedly met with Jack Smith, the special counsel, looking into Trump's crimes. Trump's attorneys, Lindsey Halligan, John Rowley, and James Trusty, reportedly met for two hours with Jack Smith, urging him not to indict. Attorney General Merrick Garland did not attend the meeting, nor did Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco. Jack Smith, according to some reporting, is about to reconvene the grand jury looking into these allegations. He's uh, expected to reconvene the grand jury later in the week. Well, the 2024 presidential elections are about to be in full bloom. After this week, we're going to know what the landscape is. Here is South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. Remember him? He ran for president in 2016, said Donald Trump was a fool, couldn't be trusted. And then he was terrified that Donald Trump would out him. So he became Trump's lapdog. Well, here is South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican, describing what this election is about. What is the difference between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, Lindsey, going into 2024? In their world, welfare spending is more important than military spending. Uh, these guys are liberals from the left. The military budget is a, an annoyance. It's money they could be spending on helping people who won't work. It could, you know, grow in the government. So we've got a classic debate here between guns and butter. If you left it up to the liberals, we'd have a rowboat uh, and a pistol and a kite uh, to defend America. Yeah, there you have it. Republicans want to plow money into the military, but not for our military, not for our soldiers, uh, for our defense contractors. And to pay for it, they want to get rid of welfare, the safety net. The Republicans are strong on war. They love the military, not the soldiers. They just love the idea of the soldiers. But when they need to be helped because of the tar pits or uh, the burn pits or because, you know, veterans, Department of Veterans Affairs, they want to privatize that so their buddies could get rich off the vets. But they love the idea of war, bombing people of color and making the defense contractors rich. They love war. Here is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in Iowa over the weekend telling voters about the war he plans on waging when he becomes president. As president, I recognize that the woke mind virus represents a war on the truth. So we will wage a war on the woke. He's going to wage a war on the woke virus. That's what he calls it, the woke virus. Hopefully, Ron DeSantis will do a better job with the woke virus than he did with the covid virus. A lot of dead grandparents in Florida because Ron DeSantis fought the vaccine and mask mandates. He's running Despite his failure on COVID, he's running on his COVID record. 
It's amazing what you can accomplish when you lie. He lost the war against COVID. Even when he fudged the numbers, he still lost it. This year, per capita, Florida comes in number eight for most COVID deaths. Congratulations. He's a failure on COVID. Last year, Florida came in ninth per capita in COVID deaths, and he was fudging the number. In other words, he's doing worse this year on COVID than he did last year. In the summer of 2021, Florida had the worst COVID record in the country, but he's going to wage a war on the woke mind virus. We will fight the woke in education. We will fight the woke in the corporations. We will fight the woke in the halls of Congress. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. We will make woke ideology leave it to the dustbin of history. It's gone. Let me hear that again, please. I, I, that speech, you know, it, it just sounds familiar. We will fight the woke in education. We will fight the woke in the corporations. We will fight the woke in the halls of Congress. We will never, ever surrender. Oh, he's plagiarizing Winston Churchill. That's what Winston Churchill said during World War II. So basically, Ron DeSantis is summoning the spirit of Churchill if Churchill fought on the side of Hitler. Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley appeared on a CNN town hall Sunday night where Jake Tapper asked her what she had against the woke mob. I mean, all of these things that are pushing what a small minority want on the majority of Americans. That's what she's got against the woke mob, a small minority of people pushing their agenda on a majority of Americans, you know, kind of like the billionaires. But she works for the billionaires. So instead, like Ron DeSantis, she targets a small minority of defenseless people who want to love the way they want to love and live the way they want to live. But somehow in this twisted game they play, it is the LGBTQ community, the most defenseless people in America. They're the bullies. They're the, the LGB, the transgender kids are the bullies because they want to love and live. They're the bullies. That's what the GOP is offering, right? War. No welfare. Lindsay spelled it out. They're not offering butter. They're offering war. No butter, no food stamps, nothing. The Republicans offer scapegoating, a war against the weak. They train low information voters to blame everyone else for their unhappiness, blame everybody other than the people who are causing their unhappiness, the billionaires. I mean, the idea that we have biological boys playing in girls sports, it is the women's issue of our time. Biological boys playing in women's sport is the women's issue of our time. Biological boys playing in women's sports is the women's issue of our time because you're a Republican. So the women's issue of our time can't be equal pay or not the Me Too movement because the people running your party have all been Me Tooed. You can't talk about rape or contraception. So it's biological boys playing in women's sports. Of all the problems facing women in America, let me hear this again. Just, I just want to make sure I heard this properly. What is it? How are we supposed to get our no, girls? Hang on, that's not it. Hang on, what is it? I mean, the idea that we have biological boys playing in girls' sports, it is the women's issue of our time. The wit, that is the women's issue of our time. And who would know what the women's issue of our time, who would know that better than a traitor to her gender, Nikki Haley, moron. Yes, uh, continue, moron. How are we supposed to get our girls used to the fact that biological boys are in their locker rooms? And then we wonder why a third of our teenage girls seriously contemplated suicide last year? Okay, you're going to burn in hell. You really are for saying that, Nikki Haley. You're going to burn in hell, and you deserve to burn in hell for that. Let's listen to that one more time. 
and then we'll peel it back. How are we supposed to get our girls used to the fact that biological boys are in their locker rooms? And then we wonder why a third of our teenage girls seriously contemplated suicide last year? You are going to burn in hell for that. Take the fact that the LGBTQ community has some of the highest suicide rates in America. Why do they have the highest suicide rates in America? Because of the persecution coming from Republicans like like Nikki Haley. And what Nikki Haley does is she throws this fact back at the LGBTQ community. And she claims that it is the transgender community that's causing teenage girls to contemplate suicide. She turns a real, a genuine problem of suicide into an evil talking point, a talking point that makes transgender children the cause of girls contemplating suicide. Back it up. Why didn't Jake Tapper ask her to back that up? Where's the empirical evidence? There is none. She pulled it out of her ass. Republicans are causing suicides in the LGBTQ community. And because they love guns so much, they make it easier for members of the LGBTQ community to act on their suicidal impulses. So what do you do if you're a Republican and you're evil? If you're evil, you lie and you say, no, 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 it's not our anti-LGBTQ persecute. It's not us persecuting transgender children. Transgender children are the ones causing girls to contemplate suicide. The reason a lot of these happen, and you mentioned shooting at the schools, you need to end gun-free zones. Gun-free zones. When you look at, killers always look for a place that's a gun-free zone, because guess what? Nobody else is gonna be able to protect themselves. You're a moron. There's no proof of that. As a matter of fact, when people go on shooting rampages, it's suicide by cop. They know they're going to die. They, 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 that's why they write the note and record the video. So the fact that there are guns there, that encourages them to shoot the place up because they know they're going to die. It's suicide by cop. The problem is what do I have to go over Uvalde again with you, you moron? There were like 5,000 cops fully armed and they were terrified of one kid with the, an AR-15. But let's give everybody guns. This is beyond, this is beyond, beyond farce. This is, uh, please continue genius Nikki Haley about gun violence. No, I don't trust government to deal with red flag laws. I don't trust that they will that they won't take them away from people who rightfully deserve to have them because you've got someone else judging whether someone should have a gun or not. It is a constitutional right that people can protect and defend themselves. Yeah. So Nikki Haley is against uh, red flag laws. Uh, but there's a problem with gun violence, especially when it comes to suicide. She just brought up the girls uh, wanting to commit suicide. She doesn't uh, support red flag laws to get guns out of the hands of people suffering from mental illness or men who have threatened their girlfriends, right? No, she doesn't trust the government to do it. What I want is the feds to do their job. What I want us is to take illegal guns off the street. Right, she doesn't trust the government. The number one killer of children is guns, right? She says it's uh, biological boys using uh, girls' restrooms. But according to, to Nikki Haley, teenage girls are committing suicide not because of the guns, right? It's transgender boys. She doesn't trust the red flag laws. You know, the laws that allow girlfriends, lawyers, doctors, and the police to petition the courts to prevent someone from owning a gun. No, that's not, that's not what's killing teen girls. It's biological boys using the restroom. Unbelievable. Say this again. What I want is the feds to do their job. What I want us is to take illegal guns off the street. Take illegal guns off the street. Define your terms. That's a talking point that I keep hearing. Get illegal guns off the street. What does that mean? Define illegal guns. I keep hearing that from Second Amendment trolls like Nikki Haley. In their world, there is no such thing as an illegal gun. What is an illegal gun? All guns are legal in your world.
And what I want is for us to have the backs of law enforcement so that they can do their jobs. The backs of law enforcement to do their jobs. I keep reading about cops getting shot. Every day I hear about a cop getting shot. Wouldn't cops be able to do their jobs if they could take the guns away from people? No, I don't trust government to deal with red flag laws. I don't trust that they will that they won't take them away from people who rightfully deserve to have them because you've got someone else judging whether someone should have a gun or not. OK, so the police are the government. You do realize that, but you don't trust the police to take guns away from people. You don't trust the police judging whether or not someone should have a gun or not. But we should still have the back of the police. How about when they're shooting a cop? How about when somebody's shooting at a cop? Are you OK with a cop shooting someone, firing a gun at them? Or do you not trust the government to make that decision, too? We're dealing with liars, morons and craven ambition, which brings me to Mike Pence, who will be doing his town hall on CNN Wednesday night, the day he makes his big announcement. Mike Pence loves guns. He loves the military because he's a devout Christian who believes government should see to it. They were killing everybody instead of feeding everybody because that's what Jesus would want. He's a deeply religious man, Mike Pence, and he's not hateful. He's not a bigot. No, no, he is a bigot, a homophobe, a liar. He is Mike Pence is personally responsible for members of the LGBTQ community in Indiana and throughout America committing suicide or getting shot or beaten up. He is, when it comes to LGBTQ issues, the worst of the worst. As a candidate for Congress back in 2000, Mike Pence intimated that he supported gay conversion therapy for members of the LGBTQ community. It was his supporters in 2016 who got written into the Republican Party's platform the position that parents should have the right to subject their gay or transgender children to a type of therapy that purportedly changes their sexuality or gender identity. It's the same type of therapy for minors that has been banned in several states because it doesn't work unless you want them to commit suicide, then it works. As governor of Indiana, he signed into a, into law a bill that allowed businesses, Christian businesses, not to provide services to LGBTQ people on the grounds that it violated their religious beliefs. You, you have a, rigid, a religious belief to persecute same-sex couples. Mike Pence is a bigot and a homophobe, and he's seething with hatred for the LGBTQ community. But you can't say that. You can't say I hate the gays, right? It's the Lee Atwater deathbed confession. Dog whistles, dog whistles, dog whistles. You can't say the N word. This is what Lee Atwater said before he died. So you say busing or school choice. You can't say I hate the LGBTQ community. This is Mike Pence over the weekend speaking to voters in Iowa. Can you hear the dog whistles? The radical left has been assaulting our values and assaulting our families almost as never before. But the great thing I've seen traveling across this country is that the American people, American people are on to them. Just ask Bud Light, <laughs> Target. You hear the dog whistle? You don't say I hate the LGBTQ community. No, instead you blow the Bud Light whistle and the audience of bigots automatically knows you're attacking the transgender community. You mention Target and you're targeting gay pride celebrations. This is how dog whistles work. You never say, I hate the LGBTQ community. That's unseemly. But your voters know who you're talking about. And because you're a Christian, because you're a Christian, you turn your own bigotry into martyrdom. And by the way, a message to Major League Baseball, religious bigotry has no place in America's pastime. See, he's not the bigot. He's not the one persecuting the LGBTQ community. 
He's not the bigot hiding behind religion to prevent same-sex marriages. Uh, he's not the one encouraging parents to resort to gay conversion therapy. He's not the bigot. He's the victim. Why? Why is he the victim? Well, because of this. The L.A. Dodgers have asked the anti-Catholic drag group uh to Pride Game Night, and then they rescinded it, and then they took it back. Catholic, this is from, what is it, Catholic, some Catholic uh, newspaper that I pulled this from. Uh, May 23rd, 2023, Catholic leaders reacted with disgust Monday night after the Los Angeles Dodgers re-invited the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence to be an honoree at the team's LGBTQ plus Pride Night game on June 16th, despite the drag group's mockery of the Catholic face, faith. Uh, when did mocking Catholic nuns become America's pastime? The Catholic advocacy group Catholic Vote tweeted. When did mocking Catholic nuns become America's pastime? I don't know. Ask every Catholic who went to Catholic school. That's all they do is mock the nuns. Well, homophobes like Joe, uh, uh, Mike Pence uh, are slippery. They hide behind Christian love when they have neither. They are neither Christian nor loving. Here is, do you remember Joel Olstein? Do you remember him? This is Joel Olstein. You might remember Joel Olstein back uh, during Hurricane Harvey. Uh, he refused to allow anyone into his Houston church during Hurricane Harvey. Uh, here he is. This is him on CNN. And I'm playing this clip. He was on uh, Piers Morgan. I think this was 12 or 13 years ago. They will not say this, but they think it. And occasionally it slips out of their mouths. And then they immediately revert to Christian love and, and we don't hate the gay community. We're not about persecution. But here is Joel Olstein. Uh, did I mention that during Hurricane Harvey, the Christian minister refused to allow uh, the victims, the flooding victims into his 16,000 capacity Lakewood church because he's such a good Christian. Joel Olstein talking to Piers Morgan 12 or 14 years ago. This is when Piers Morgan had a show on CNN. Here is Joel Olstein talking about same-sex marriage. More states have endorsed same-sex marriage. It's becoming much less of a prohibitive kind of issue than it used to be. What's your view now? You know, Piers, it really never changes because mine was, mine's based out of the Scripture. That's what I believe that the Scripture says, that, that homosexuality is a sin. So, it, you know, I believed it before and I still believe it now. Homosexuality is a sin. It's what the Scripture said. I believed it years ago, and I believe it now, maybe with time I can camouflage these beliefs, but... No, personally, 200 years from now, the scriptures are still going to say that. 200 years from now, the scriptures are still going to say that. This is what they believe. They won't admit it, but this is what they believe. They believe in gay conversion and go commit suicide. Go commit suicide. Well, Sebastian Gorka has a radio show that's televised. He's a right wing Hungarian fascist who's advised Donald Trump. And the right wing is obsessed with masculinity. Josh Hawley, the senator from Missouri, has written a book about what it means to be a man. It's very important that men are men and women are women. And Sebastian Gorka wanted Matt Schlapp, the, the, uh, the chairman of the American Conservative Union. They're responsible for uh, CPAC. And last week on his radio show, Sebastian Gorka asked Matt Schlapp who his male role model is. Because, you know, Matt Schlapp is a conservative and he must have a male role model. And we always get different answers. What is the greatest influence on them in their understanding of manhood. Some have said 
their dad, the football coach. We had one guy say it was fictional characters like you know, Tom Clancy's adventurers like Jack Ryan. In your understanding of what it means to be a man, who shaped it over time? God, I love movies and I love all these cultural references. I'm going to give you an answer you've never uh, ever thought of, but the mother of God. The mother of God is your male role model, but that would be a woman. I, I, I think you're the Vir Virgin Mary is a dude. Is that what you're saying? I think she's someone, if you think about her, I've always felt close to her. I went to a college named after her. When I had troubles, I had a little bit of a tough childhood. And when I had troubles as a child, I always felt like she was near me. I think one of the reasons why the Virgin Mary is such a woman of history, not just take the faith part out of it, she raised Jesus Christ, who's the greatest man who ever walked on this earth. She wasn't trying to hold him back. She was trying to build him up. It was all about her son. Wait a second. You were asked... Matt Schlapp, who is currently being sued for punching a man's junk. We've talked about this on the show. Matt Schlapp, conservative, is being sued for uh, sexually assaulting another man. And now he was asked by Sebastian Gorka, who is your male role model? And you say the Virgin Mary. But conservatives are all about separating men from women, but you're saying you can learn to be a man through a woman, which might explain this story from last week in Utah. The Davis County School District is removing the King James Version of the Bible from elementary and junior high schools here. The school district says around seven to eight schools around the district had the Bible in their libraries. They are being removed following a Utah law that prohibits schools from having pornographic or indecent material. So I'm not the only one who jerks off to the Bible. All right. That makes sense to me. Joining us from Los Angeles, he is the founder and the treasurer of the Blue America Pack, and he writes, Down with Tyranny, Howie Klein. Welcome, Howie. Thank you. Welcome to you. So I was uh, looking through Down with Tyranny last night, figuring out what to talk about with you. I guess the first thing we should discuss is the evangelicals, Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump. How do the evangelicals explain their devotion to, as you write, their new Messiah, Donald Trump? And is DeSantis gaining on Trump in the evangelical lane? Well, I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah, any support that uh, DeSantis gets is, is at Trump's expense. Um, but and he's getting some. But, uh, you know, they're both they're both characters that the evangelical community uh, associates with. The problem is that the evangelical community has lost touch with Jesus Christ and Jesus's message. And that's uh, and that's a real problem because there are so many of them. And, you know, they're they're you know, I mean, if you know, look at look at DeSantis's whole war against uh, woke. He, he keeps carrying on about him and him and that mafia wife of his. And and then you've got, um, you know, the, I mean, you any and if these evangelicals were in any way familiar with Jesus's message, it's the opposite of Ron DeSantis. It's like Ron DeSantis is, is representing the devil uh, and, and and not that Trump isn't. But uh, I mean, really, they both are. And, and this war against woke is a war against Jesus. And why isn't anybody fighting fire and brimstone with fire and brimstone? Why aren't people? I am. Uh, you are. <laughs> but where are where is the where are the evangelical Christians? Where are the rabbis? Where are the religious figures saying, stop? This is not what Jesus would say, do we well, have? You, you, you do have you do have some of that. You know, obviously, the first place you would look for that would be uh, John Pavlovitz, 
And uh, he does have a piece on that today uh, on his own blog where he it's called um, Woke, I think Woke Will Win. Or, yeah, Woke Will Win. And he, and he talks about it in some depth about how um, – how there? Well, he doesn't really talk about the Jesus part, he, but he does talk about you know what woke means in reality and how how wrong DeSantis and Trump are to put it down. I mean, Trump Trump doesn't use the word woke because he thinks it's uh, you know it's kind of a trademark of. Uh, let me of, let me as a favor <laughs> as, as a favor could, could you hold off on cooking until <laughs> just give me. 20 more minutes without cooking. I apologize. What are you, I was just watching. What, what, what are you cooking tonight? Well, I, uh, I, a lot. I, I made a, um, uh, an onion uh, pie, mm-hmm. which is unbelievably delicious. It, it, it's an onion mushroom pie. Okay. No, no cheese. Instead of cheese, I use uh, nutritional yeast. Right. And an a, a incredible... Uh, chickpea vegetable soup that that's like mouthwateringly really good. So so that is the, uh, the you know those two things are the main course. And then for dessert, I made a chocolate cake. And what you heard before was me just washing a spoon, a wooden spoon, because I made a raspberry sauce uh, to go over the chocolate cake. Okay, if just give me twenty minutes without the cooking. All we have with you is the sound. So the evangelicals. Will any of them come to their senses or is there something baked into this iteration of Christianity where they love the sinner? And well, not, not, not Christianity. I mean, the evangelical thing is, is different from Christianity in general. I mean, mainline Protestants and a lot of Catholics uh, see through this thing and, and they're not into it. I mean, mm-hmm. they're, you know, it's not like they're all, uh, you know, Trumpists or, or DeSanti people. It's not, this doesn't work that way. Right. Thank God. Evangelicals are the ones who are the most likely to be looking for someone to tell them what to do. Uh, just like the um, uh, I, I, the Haredi or the, the Hasidics. Right. They just want someone to tell them what to do so they don't have to think about it. And that's their personality. They have a, a personality that, that is very, very exploitable uh, by, by fascism. And despite... His tra- uh, transgressions, Trump gave the evangelicals everything they wanted, the, the Supreme Court of their dreams. We, we've turned back Roe v. Wade. Now there's a war on the LGBTQ community. They're, are they winning the cultural war slowly? Or what's what do you think? Last week you said they're not. Yeah, and I was going to just say that again. I don't think that they're winning. Um, you know, they, they've got their... You know, I mean, if they were winning, Trump would be uh, over 50 percent, but he never gets there. But you know, he's not winning. But are the evangelicals winning when you when you well, think they, that you can't get an abortion? They have, they, have, they have the Supreme Court that they wanted. And in in some of the backward states like Arkansas that have, you know, really bad, uh, uh, you know, bad education and bad health and things like that. They they've managed to uh, uh, ban abortion, but but you know they're not going to have a national ab- abortion ban. They are going to continue to lose elections uh, due to this, and, and then eventually it'll all, even the Supreme Court. It may take a, a long time, but eventually that'll turn around as well. But it seems like a lot of damage is being done during the yes. interim. Yes, when you know. When, when you think of a state like Texas, for example, um, you know there are millions of normal people in Texas, and they live in Houston and Austin and Dallas and San Antonio and El Paso, and these people have to, you know, put up with this, uh, you know, crazy right wing government, uh, and you know it, it's a problem. It's a it's a real problem for these folks. I, I mean, you know, friends of mine, literally, friends of mine have moved out of Florida or are moving out of Florida. Friends of mine um, are, you know, I was talking with a guy the other day whose um, uh, son is, is, is trans, a trans person and the, the family's moving. They, they, they don't, I mean, they love Texas and they don't want to move. 
They live in Austin. They absolutely love it. And, uh, you know, the wife is selling her business and my friend is, uh, you know, pulling up stakes and everything he's built is going to be gone. And they're, they're moving to another state. Because you're giving license to the transphobes to beat them up, to persecute, to taunt. Yeah. It's not just uh, banning medical treatment. It, 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 it's opening the floodgate for hate. That's right. And, and to you know do everything they can to make these uh, children feel somehow that they're less human beings. And, you know, my friend isn't going to put up with that for, for his son. His, right. His, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't mean that. His daughter. Right. Right. What do we do? We just start sorting out the states like Marjorie Taylor Greene said, or we we go into these states and fight? I, I think. Well, in a lot of cases, we, we do have to fight, I, I believe. But in the case of, of a young child in this kind of a situation, I don't think the parents are going to be able to put up, put, a, I mean, my friend is very, very strong and if he can't do it. I can't see anybody being able to do it. So is there something wrong with our side? Cause in 2016, I believe it was North Carolina. They passed a, an anti trans law, the bathroom bill that was just signed into law in Florida, in North Carolina in 2016, they signed the identical law and there was a boycott of north carolina within two years they had a new governor and that law was taken off the books why aren't we boycotting florida why is the lgbtq community doing gay days at disney world well i guess disney world deserves the support they're they're leading the fight against desantis in florida so i understand that why isn't there a boycott of Florida? There's an LGBTQ advisory for travel right. to Florida. And not just LGBTQ. I mean, the, 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 NAAC, the NAACP put out an advisory, and um, the biggest Hispanic group in America put out an advisory. So there were quite a few advisories, and that's kind of a warning signal. And, and you know, I, I don't know if they're going to wind up putting out a, um, a boycott or not. I think people are making up their own minds at this time if they want to go and spend money in Florida. And we'll see. Uh, don't know yet. I don't want to I don't want to condemn our side for that. Uh, you know, remember, the Florida Democratic Party practically doesn't exist anymore. It's been, you know, decimating itself over the last decade. And it's just absolutely pathetic. Uh, it's like the Ohio Democratic Party. It's like non-existent. It, it has little ghettos where it exists, you know, like in Broward County or in Miami, where it's failed anyway, in Jacksonville. Um, but, you know, there was just an election in Jacksonville, and it was an open seat, but it, it, they had a Republican mayor, and the Democrat beat the Republican, and very handily. Right, she's a reporter, so, right? A, a journalist. A journalist, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I have high hopes for uh, what's going to happen. The Democratic Party is pretty pathetic. You know, it, 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 you know the, the, the main reason to vote for them is because the Republicans are so bad. So it's, you know, we're, we're back in a situation of the lesser of two evils. And that's, uh, you know, that's unfortunate. I mean, don't you wish there was someone like FDR? Or Bobby where, Kennedy. You know, yeah, where where there wouldn't even be a Republican Party left, they would be so so uh, pulverized. But instead, you know, we have a Democratic Party that just voted for the for the the bill that the Republicans put together, basically. Uh, and that's uh, you know, how did that happen? Right. Fifty five years ago, on June fifth, Bobby Kennedy was assassinated. How different would the world have been had he been able to make it to the Oval Office? I don't know. Who knows? You know, that that's a funny question, David. You know, I did you do you know that I, I knew him pretty well? I was a kid. Was you very, worked very the young. elevator. That's right. I worked his elevator. So every day he would get on the elevator and more often than not, he would be talking with somebody uh, and saying things that he would never say to the press, but saying them in front of me, thinking that I was a piece of furniture. Right. <laughs> 
you know, I've come around on the Kennedys. I, as a child, I was obsessed with them. And then I learned some stuff about them and I went, eh, they're just as bad as everybody else. As I get older, I realize that there's a poetry to politics that lasts and they they understood the poetry of politics. And that is you you have to take care of everyone that the, they the noblesse oblige of wealthy Kennedys. They you know, Teddy Kennedy turned out to be a great senator who was committed to taking care of the least among us to his dying day. He was take, trying to take care of the poor. Why would anybody go into politics otherwise? What, what's the point to just to get rich? Why? why how do these politicians justify th- their? Well, I don't know that they justify necessarily their their um, their motives. A lot of them are motivated by other things, like you know the idea of power, the need for um, adulation, and, and of course, getting rich is is, is a, a factor as well. Right, and it's just when you look at somebody like Kevin McCarthy. It's just ambition. It's just the desire for power by any means necessary. Did he stare into the did he stare into the abyss and blink when it came to the Freedom Caucus and the debt ceiling negotiations? Did he is was there some halo effect with him? Did he think, oh, my God, I'm the speaker of the House. I can't give in to these crazies. No, I think he he said quite the opposite. Like, I'm the Speaker of the House. I can't give in to this Biden character. I think he got a lot of what he wanted uh, and prevented the Democrats from getting almost anything. I mean, what did the Democrats get out of this thing other than, um, you know, not going over the cliff? They didn't get anything. Well, he didn't touch. I think think McCarthy did pretty well. You, You know, did he get everything that the Freedom Caucus wanted? No. He didn't. And that was never going to happen. But but he got a lot of it. I mean, basically, the the deal that they signed was a Freedom Caucus deal, just not as bad as it could have been. Well, that's not what conventional wisdom is. No kidding. Conventional wisdom is the Freedom Caucus says it's a garbage deal. They didn't vote for it. Right. They're angry. They're angry because they want they didn't get what they wanted. But, uh, you know, what is it, 46 of, well, a few dozen of the best Democrats in Congress voted against it. Um, and they voted against it because it was a, a, a turd sandwich. As Chip Roy called it. The- yes, that's, that's exactly, you know, they called it a crap sandwich, a shit sandwich, and a turd sandwich. <laughs> each, each, I think it was Marjorie Trader Green who said shit sandwich, uh, Lauren Boebert, uh, crap sandwich, and uh, but the, the initial thing was turd sandwich, which is what I like. And that was Chip Roy. Yeah. And I'm sure he's had his share. They they didn't touch Medicare, Medicaid uh, or, or Social Security. There were no work requirements for Medicaid. There's some work requirements for food stamps, which is horrific. I mean, it's disgusting. But they got a, a an increase to the military that Biden wanted. I, I don't know what. Yeah. what but yeah, Biden, that's right, that Biden wanted. So what did the Freedom Caucus get? That. That that was that you know, they want they wanted all that. And more. They want you know, it, look, if it was up to the Freedom Caucus, they would have abolished the IRA IRS. And that right. isn't gonna happen. But, but they, they they managed to get um ten twenty one billion dollars at, at sorry? I, I thought it was ten billion, but no, it was 21 billion, 21 point something billion. That's significant. So over 21 billion. Yeah, of course it is. Out of the 80 billion that they gave them, uh, you know, but, you know, what the Biden people say is that now, what they say now is that they can play around with the books and uh, it's going to be okay, even with that uh, large amount of money because they, they can still spend what they want. Uh, it's not it's not segre- segregated by year. And all we need is another Democratic president and and uh, House and Senate. And we can add the 20 billion back. That kind of thing. Is it and they're saying that about everything. But on the other hand, the Republicans are saying the opposite. 
you know, all we need is to take over the Senate and uh, get a president, a, a Republican president, and we can get everything we wanted. Setting the stage for the next couple of months, we're going to be focusing on the past and the future, but not now. We're going to look back at all the legislative achievements that Biden's had. We're going to look forward to what he will have if he gets reelected short of uh, a, a national crisis, which I'm sure we will have. We won't be focusing on the here and the now will be this is this is the season for politics and policy. Right. And Cornell West and Cornell West. This is where you start kind of horse racing things and uh, focusing on whether or not these bills that did get passed were worked or uh, didn't. So the next year and a half is just a dogfight, right? Yeah. I, I mean, as I've been saying and will always be saying to me, it's good. It's going to all be you know, who's the lesser of two evils? Right. And how do you convince these independents and swing voters that the Republicans are, are the greater of two evils? And that, that's really all it's about. I mean, you can't make a, a really big case for um, the Democrats. You can say they're not as bad as the Republicans. That's about it. And that is something, as I've said over and over again, that my grandfather grandfather taught me when I was a little kid. He said, you know, uh, the only thing that's worse than a Democrat is a Republican. We're not going to see any major pieces of legislation passed. However, McCarthy did posture and brag about being able to reach across the aisle on this budget deal. Is there anything looming that could get passed? Anything of significance? Oh, they'll pass, they'll pass, no, not of significance. They'll pass things of, of not significance um, in a bipartisan way. But I, I don't see anything significant passing. I mean, the Republicans this week have, you know, a bill to save your gas stove and right. a bill to um, the other big one, the Ra the RAIN Act they're bringing up again to uh, get rid of uh, lots of regulations. You know, they'll pass they'll pass both of those things and then they'll the, the, the Senate won't even take them, take them up. And Biden's executive orders are going through the courts now. Are there any executive orders he's going to be signing between now and Election Day that we can look forward to? Or is it just now posturing in foreign policy? It's going to be foreign policy mostly, right? Well, he hasn't mentioned to me whether or not he's going to uh, have any executive orders. But I wouldn't be surprised if they come up with one that's popular and and, and uh you know, have that as another thing they can run on. A but war. Hopefully not. Yeah, but th 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 there'll be some crisis where <laughs> he'll have to look presidential. Why is he polling so poorly? I, you, you know, obviously I'm not a fan of Biden's, but I, I'm voting for him. But you're voting for him instead of, instead of Cornell West. I like well, maybe in the primaries. Is is Cornell running in the Democratic Party or is he it? announced yes. Cornell announced his campaign today. Well, I would have to vote for I live in New York, so I would have to vote for him in the primaries. But in the general first off, is is Biden or Trump gonna participate in their in the debates with their challengers? Forget the debates in November. Trump isn't showing up for the Republican debate in August. I don't think he will. Uh, his point is that, you know, he, you know, why should he appear on the same stage as these people and give them publicity? You know, he'll probably have some kind of a thing that he'll run on the, at the same time as the Republican uh, debate in, uh, in Milwaukee. His point is that he's bigger than, than the debate. Right. Probably true. It is probably true. And, you know, in order to be in the debate, one of one of the requirements is that you have to pledge that you will um, support the uh, support the eventual winner. And Trump's not going to do that. He, he's not, I mean, unless he wants to lie, but right. he's certainly not going to support uh, anybody who's not whose name is Donald J. Trump. And you got to win the caucuses and the primaries. So is there? 
Anything in Iowa that suggests Mike Pence is stronger than we believe? Uh, not that I've seen. Because the guy with the vest, the uh, the guy from Pennsylvania, won Iowa. What's his name? I forgot. The abor- anti-abortion. Rick Santorum. Right. He Didn't he win Iowa? He may have. Yeah. Yeah, Iowa is a quirky, weird place. They don't even have a primary. They have the, the caucus system. And, uh, you know, I don't I don't think that anyone really cares what happens in Iowa. Yeah. And you write that Trump is going to be indicted because of the classified documents that he gave an interview with Mark Meadows autobiographers. <laughs> That's that literally is autobiographers. And he said there was a. Uh, a a war plan against Iran that he had and and they can't find it. And he knew he said on tape, this is classified. I can't show it to you. And the fact that he knew it was classified and they couldn't show it to these writers is proof that he knew he was committing a crime. Right. Yeah, I think they have lots of lots of proof. Uh, you know, way beyond that. And, you know, that's just one indication. But I think that um, what's his name? Jack. Uh, Is it Smith? I think so. Yeah. Jack Smith has got tons of stuff on him and, and it's, it's just growing. And I think it's not going to be too long before he does indict him. And once he's indicted. Once he's indicted, I'm worried that. uh they're going to make him drop out of the race and we're going to be stuck with uh, DeSantis and that witch wife. What, what's the story with the wife? She's getting bad press. Politico wrote a nasty piece about her and you said mopped up. Yeah. Well, well her uncle was uh, Johnny Bananas. I mean, she's, she's very, she grew up as a, a mafia princess. Really? And she, yeah. And she's a, uh, you know, her her nickname among Republicans in Florida is the scorekeeper. I mean, they don't like her. No one likes her. She's a she's a horrible, awful person. She's worse than DeSantis. Her, so her uncle was Joey Bananas. Who, who was yes, Joey? And, and the, he was uh, a, to the consigliere for the uh, the boss of, um, of Philadelphia, the Philadelphia mob. And then there was a kerfuffle and a little mistake. He thought he had permission from the commission to uh, kill that guy. Nicky Scarfo? So he did kill him. No. I can't remember his name. Okay. But that isn't it. So he, he did kill – I don't think it's his name. So he did kill him. He killed his boss. They, there was a fight over a, a, a meth uh, deal or a meth business. And he murdered him and or he had him murdered. And um, – then he, the next thing is he went in front of the commission, called him, they, and he went in front of the commission. And he said he had permission. They said, who gave him permission? And he said, well, he did. And he pointed to one of the guys, and the guy said, I never gave him permission. And, uh, and then the next thing is that um, Joey Bananas and, and his brother-in-law, who was the one who pulled the trigger, uh, were found beaten to death naked in the trunk of their car. She that's, is that's, the that's, she, that's, so that's her father's she, brother or mother's brother. Mother's mother's brother. Her mother's brother, but her mother wasn't mobbed up, right? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? That she's a, a mafia princess, Mike Pence, and Chris. He's a Chris, mafia princess also. He, well, he's a princess. He, oh, well, he's, definitely, he's definitely a mafia, a mafia guy. Are you joking? Chris Christie? Oh, no, no. I thought you uh, Mike Pence. Chris Christie? No, not Mike Pence. Mike Pence is just a princess. <laughs> but Chris Christie? Yes. The New Jersey governor. And yeah. why would he be Why would he be running? He doesn't stand a chance. Well, no, he has no chance. Although, you know, these politicians have such big egos that he thinks, you know, if he gets on the national stage, everyone will fall in love with him like his best friends or uh, tell him, but he, uh, he, the conventional wisdom is that he's running just to prevent Trump from getting in, that he's the only one who's strong enough to go in and, uh, you know, heckle Trump and uh, call him out and, and destroy him. He, you know, his claim to fame is that he destroyed Marco Rubio, (laughs) allowing Trump free access. Uh, And uh, he thinks he can do it. 
I think it's insane and absurd, and especially because he's not going to wind up on the on the state on the stage with Trump because he's not going to have forty thousand individual donors. I don't think, and he's not going to. Uh, I don't think he'll poll well enough to get on the stage. Maybe he will, but then Trump won't be on the, on the stage. And they, in fact, he won't be on the stage because he has already publicly said that he will not support Trump. That right. means he doesn't get to participate in the. Uh, uh, in the debate, at least the first debate, this wasn't uh, rules for the entire thing. It was just rules for the August debate in Milwaukee. Right. And they'll they'll change the rules because Trump is going to participate and they're going to wind up excluding people. And you're going to have a debate with a bunch of clowns. For the first time before yeah. you go, for the first time, we're seeing polling showing Trump leading Biden in the general election. This That was just an, a one outlier poll and and there have been other polls that came out since then that show otherwise that i don't think that that poll is uh you know polls pollsters make mistakes they do it wrong sometimes and this poll this one poll uh got it wrong okay and everyone got very nervous about it i watched the trump town hall and then i watched the one with hannity last week he's an amazing he's an amazing liar he, I forgot. He, has always been. he just incredible. And I thought Biden can't debate him in his current state. Wouldn't Trump mop the floor <laughs> with Biden? Yes. So how big a threat is Trump? Are we looking at another four years of Trump? I, I don't know. I mean, there's no way to tell. I mean, he's going to get indicted. And I, I, uh, I assume what they'll do is they'll tell him uh, you're going to go to jail for, for a decade and you're going to die in jail uh, unless you uh, retire from politics. That's what I assume is going to happen. Last question. Yo. The reason I was thinking about our conversation last week, the reason I think Trump is less dangerous than DeSantis is despite everything that Trump did in a way the system held. I'm talking worst case scenario that there were enough Republicans who either openly or quietly undermined his presidency, that he had the dregs of the Republican Party at the end. Well, of he the- won't this time. He, this, I mean, there'll be dregs, but they know what to do. He's very, very dangerous. Don't don't uh, don't think he's not. And the people around him are very dangerous. I, I and I, I and I don't think he's any more or less dangerous than uh, than DeSantis. I mean, I, I I hate both of them equally, and fear both of them. And, but I don't think that either one of them is going to get in. DeSantis wants something. To me, Trump just wants the attention and money, and will say and do whatever it takes. He's not on. A, Hitlerian mission to transform America. Is he the way DeSantis is? That's right. I, I agree. So I don't think he I don't think he cares one way or the other. So the worst case scenario is DeSantis gets elected president, not Trump. Right? Um in, in my heart I feel that. Yeah, I do too. And Biden should be more popular, even though he, we don't we wanted Bernie. I don't understand why he's not doing better in the polling. I think he has a record that he can run on for low information Democrats. I think if you're a low information Democrat who's not falling through the crack cracks, I think Biden did the job for you. Not, not if you're. Half this country, they can't come up with a thousand dollars for an emergency. But if you're a low information liberal Democrat, Biden has been a success, right? Um, Biden is appealing to, you know, about 40 percent of, of, of the population. And I don't see why he would, I don't see why he should appeal to more than that. OK, uh, you know, I don't think he's any good. And uh, you know, people see it and they don't necessarily vote on, on policy either. Right. You know, they just look at him and they think, no. OK. Howie Klein, founder, treasurer of the Blue America PAC. Read him every day 
over at Down with Tyranny. Thank you, Howie. Enjoy the chocolate cake with the raspberry sauce. Thanks, David. Okay, I'll talk to you next week, I hope. (laughs) 